the class, but just being very mindful of your own body. Make sure that you're paying attention to any aches or pains, anything that your body is telling you, um, telling you that you shouldn't be doing. Your body and you know best. Um, even if I was, if even if I had you guys in my physical class, I'd say the same things. At the end of the day, I'm not a doctor, so if it feels wrong, take a break, have a drink of water, pause, rejoin us when you're ready. Do as much or as little of the class as you would like. And if you want to spend the next 45 minutes lying on your back on the mat, be my guest. Um, we're just going to do a nice Saturday night energizing flow tonight. Uh, just getting into all the corners of our body, waking ourselves up and um, just getting ready for, well, we've done half the weekend, but getting ready for Sunday, um, getting ready for bed. We're just going to get into all those little nooks and crannies. Obviously, we didn't have a class last night, so I'm going to try and really energise you tonight. Um, so bring yourself onto your mat. And as always, if you haven't got a mat, that's absolutely fine. You can take your class on um, on a rug, on a towel, on the floor, wherever you feel comfortable, it's completely up to you. Bring yourself into a seated position, cross-legged on your mat, drop your palms onto your knees, pull those shoulders down, neck long, heart centre open, close your eyes. And let's take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Expand your abdomen and send all of that air down towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling them like a glass all the way to the top. And as you exhale, reverse the breath, pull the navel in towards the spine. And again, inhale. And exhale. Start to tune out your distractions. Tune into your body and your breath. Forget everything you did before or need to do after. And just allow your mind to become clear. So maybe you reach for an imaginary broom and sweep the mind clear of any clutter, any wandering thoughts or worries. Shift your focus completely towards your breath. Feel that inhale wash through you, cleansing your body. Feel it run to the fingers, to the toes, through your limbs. And on the exhale, feel that navel pull in towards the spine as you release every drop. Ground down through your sit bones and lift through your spine and your chest, pulling the shoulders down your back. Let's start to tune into key tension points, so areas we hold pockets of stress really subtly, sometimes without even really noticing it. So the main ones are our shoulder, our jaw and our facial features. So just pull those shoulders away from the ears, feel them drawing down your spine, allowing your neck to grow long. But keep yourself lifted as you pull those shoulders down. Shoulders down, lift through the spine. Grounded but lifted. Unlock any tension in your face, so letting go of any frowning or furrowing the brow. Allow your features to become neutral and gentle. Unlock your jaw, softening the area around your jawbone. Unclench your back teeth. Drop the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Maybe you open your mouth a little bit, maybe you stick your tongue out a tiny bit. Whatever works for you to let go of all that tightness in that area. So as humans, we do hold on to pockets of stress and tension. And these areas are particularly vulnerable to that. So not just throughout this class, but throughout our day-to-day -day life, try and check in with those three areas and just make sure that you're not 
unnecessarily frowning or clenching or drawing the shoulders up. All these areas contribute to headaches, neck, shoulder and back pain. So just let them go, feel them drop away. When you've let go of that tension, let's gently start to mobilize our body. So draw that chin towards your shoulder. And then gentle half moons with the neck, roll the head from shoulder to shoulder. Releasing any tension, just gently starting to mobilize that neck. Keep the breath flowing. And those of you that want to progress that into a full head roll by all means do. Really nice. Gently bring yourself back to center, return to center, roll those shoulders up to the ears, down the spine, pull them up and down, up to the ears, down your spine. And as you pull them up, Feel them lift as you pull them down, open that heart center. Imagine that you're drawing circles on the wall behind you with those shoulder blades. Deep indulgent shoulder rolls, really letting go of any tightness in that area. So one of the things I was requested on Instagram was shoulder mobility. So all these little bits that we do at the beginning are really good for mobilizing shoulders. Let's go back the other way. Let's roll them forward today as well a little bit more, uh, it feels a little bit weird to roll them forward. And then let's interlace our fingers at the front. Imagine you're hugging a giant beach ball, pull the shoulders apart at the back, drop the chin to the chest, create a C shape with the spine. So this is kind of like a, this little sequence, it's sort of like a very small seated sun salutation. Exhale, push the arms up towards the sky, drop the shoulders, lengthen the neck. And I also use this to loosen up the shoulders. Inhale, reach those arms on either side of you. In line with your shoulders, reach those fingers to either side of the room. Exhale, draw the arms behind, pull the shoulder blades together, open your heart center. And let's inhale, draw the fingers together at the front, drop the chin to the chest, deep breath, inhale. Exhale, push the arms up towards the sky, drop those shoulders. Inhale, open the arms wide, fingers to either side of the room. Exhale, draw your arms behind, heart center open, shoulders together at the back. Let's do that sequence one more time. Inhale, interlace the fingers, C shape with the spine, chin to the chest, pull those shoulders apart. Exhale, pushing the air away, drop the shoulders down. Inhale, opening. Exhale, pull the arms behind, really nice. Unlace the fingers, drop the left hand behind you and take the right hand to the outside of your left knee. Drop your shoulders down, lift up through your spine. Take a deep breath and as you exhale, push against your left knee with your right hand, gazing all the way behind you. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale, that back arm is used as a support post, not a leaning post, to so try and still keep yourself upright. Looking all the way behind you. And exhale. Gently bring yourself back to center, release the twist, drop the right hand behind, left hand to the outside of the right knee, sit tall, drop the shoulders, inhale. Exhale, push that knee away and gaze behind you. So when we're twisting, we're releasing toxins from the organs because we're compressing them. And when we release the twist, we allow fresh blood to run through our organs. Deep breath, gaze all the way behind you, get as deep into that twist as possible. And gently bring yourself back to center, really nice. Left hand in line with your left hip, right arm up and over. Reach those right fingers towards the left side of the room. Push into that right hip and keep those bum cheeks glued down, planted on the mat. Fingers all the way across, inhale, we lengthen. Exhale, we reach, keep that neck long, shoulders down. If you want, you can drop down onto that left forearm as you reach those fingers across. Deep breath, inhale. Keep that heart center open. And if you feel those bum cheeks lifting, pull yourself slightly up the stretch. Really imagine someone's got the right fingers. They're trying to add inches onto that side of the body. Deep breath. 
Exhale, gently bring yourself back to center. Drop that right hand in line with your right hip. Reach the left arm up and over those fingers towards the right side of the room. Push into the left hip from hip to fingertip. A nice deep stretch. Inhale. Exhale, we reach, dropping down onto your right forearm, only if you feel like you can keep those sit bones even. Shoulders down, neck long, deep breath, inhale. Nice lateral stretch. Imagine someone's pulling you by those left fingers, trying to get extra length out of that side of the body. Deep breath. Exhale, gently bringing yourself back to centre. Well done. Bring your palms in front. And tuck the legs and bring yourself into an all fours position on your mat. So wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Take a deep breath here. Start to drop the navel towards the floor. Gaze up to the sky. Hollow out that lower back. Exhale, arch like a scared cat. Pull the navel in. Crown of the head towards the floor. Inhale again. Lift that heart centre. Hollow the lower back. Cow pose. Exhale into your cat pose, spread the shoulders, crown of the head towards the floor. And as always, if you enjoy this mobilization of the spine here, please continue. Those of you that would like to freestyle this movement, then feel free to get your wiggle on, really get into all the corners of your body. So just to give you some options, you can get your hips involved, you can circle your body, you can just do like full body wiggling. You can turn the arms around, get into your wrist. That's good if you're practicing any hand balances or arm balances. You can also come all the way forward, take a cobra pose, and then push all the way back into your child's pose. If you reach those fingers out in child's pose as well, you get into your shoulders. Maybe you just want to wiggle around and really just push yourself into little positions and corners of your body. Use your breath to guide you through the movement and really indulge in this movement. Um, so the lovely thing about practicing from home is that you can really, really do whatever you want. And this is a really nice thing to do as well. So if you don't have time to do a full class or a full workout or a full stretch when you wake up or before you go to bed, this is a really nice thing to do to just loosen the body, to just really feel which areas of your body you want to get into and just wake up all those, uh, all those little corners, get the fluids flowing. Really lovely, everybody. Keep breathing. And let's take one more deep breath here. Gently, we're going to bring ourselves back to center. Push down through the palms. Lovely, tuck your toes under. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, push those sit bones towards the sky and bring yourself into your downward facing dog. So pull the shoulders away from the ears. Rotating the shoulders externally, so we're pulling them outwards. So um, that stops us getting any rotator cuff injuries. Spread the fingers wide, make sure those middle fingers are slightly off center out to the sides of your mat. Navel to the spine, straight line from the tip of your tailbone down to your arms, gazing between your legs. And if you want to, you can bend the knees. Everyone knows by now I'm an advocate for bent knees in yoga. So Drawing those heels towards the mat, but if they're not meeting the mat today, absolutely do not worry. Really nice, everybody. So move my mat back slightly. Um, walk those feet out, start to loosen up your calves and your hamstrings, so like your bicycle and your leg. Deep breath here. Bicycle those legs. Really nice. And then you're going to bring yourself up onto the balls of your feet, lift those heels, try and keep yourself in that down dog position. And exhale, lower. So this is gently starting to ease those hamstrings and calves into a nice stretched out feeling. And lift and lower. So if you've got tight hamstrings and calves, which I really do, this is a very gentle one that starts to loosen up those areas. Lift. And lowering, keeping that navel drawn in as you lift. You keep yourself in that down dog position. And lower, well done. Looking good, everyone. And lift. And lower. And lifting. And lowering. And let's go for one more. Lift those heels. 
and lower take a deep breath with the body forward take yourself into your high plank wrists under shoulders body in a nice straight line engage that core start to drop the knees towards the mat but just hover them as you do send the bum back and then up downward dog so let's take that little circle five times so we inhale forward high plank knees bum exhale down dog and plank knees bum and down dog and three knees bum down dog and two knees bum down dog and one knees bum down dog take a deep breath here inhale that right leg all the way up towards the sky three legged dog and you can either stay here or you can bend that right knee gaze underneath the right armpit open up the hips or if you want to if it's in your practice walk the whole way over take your wild thing pose reach back with your right hand lift those hips nice and high wherever you are three-legged hip opener or wild thing we'll hold for five four three two and one wild things gently back into your three legged dog and everybody draw that right knee in towards the chest plant that right foot reach your arms up in line with your ears take yourself into a high lunge make sure that right knee is above your right ankle deep breath here inhale turn that left foot out bring the arms in line with your shoulders and take your warrior two I'm just going to move the camera slightly so warrior two arms in line with your shoulders no, I'm not because it's not going to let me. Arms in line with your shoulders. As usual, face becomes sorry, my head has been cut off. Take a deep breath, start to hinge forward with that right hand, turn the right palm up, and send that left arm down the back of the left leg, the right arm up and over into your reverse warrior. Really lovely. Deep inhale. Exhale, gently bring yourself back into your warrior two. Straighten the legs, bring the palms together at your heart center, both feet facing straight ahead. Start to bend that left knee, drop that left hand down to the mat, Skandasana, reach that right arm up towards the sky. Really nice, take a deep breath here, inhale. Exhale, drop both hands, walk them to the center, bring yourself into a wide leg forward fold. Start to draw the crown of the head towards the floor. Feel that pull on the back of your hamstrings. So, as you're pulling the crown of the head towards the floor, you're going to feel that spine lengthening. This is a really good one for lower back pain. It's also good practice for tripod headstand because this is a good place to lift up from. Deep breath in here. Exhale, sink deeper into that stretch, pulling yourself towards the floor. Deep breath. Really nice. Give me one more inhale here. Exhale, flatten the back, straighten the arms, drop your right hand to the center of your legs and lift that left arm up into your star pose. So you're trying to bring that right arm right into the center of your leg so it looks like you've got a third leg. Make sure those shoulders are stacked, arms in a nice straight line, and try and gaze up at your extended arm if you can. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. Exhale, drop that hand and walk the hands to the inside of the right foot. Turn both feet to face the front and bring yourself into your dragon pose. So left leg straight behind you, right knee facing the front. If you want to, you can drop down onto your forearms and take your lizard pose here as well. Deep breath, hold here. And if you want to as well, you can rock on that back knee in time with, on your back knee, on your back foot in time with your breath, which is gonna stick deep into your hip flexors. So give me five, four, three, two, and one. If you're on your forearms straight and those arms, place the palms flat, take your right leg and you're just going to post it behind those hands and drop down into your pigeon pose. So your right calf is as parallel with the top of the mat as you can get it. And I'm just going to switch sides because I just can't talk to you from that side for some reason. It's an OCD thing. <laughs> And send that left leg back. So, most important thing in our pigeon pose is to make sure our hips square to the front. So what I want you to look at when you're doing this 
is if you've got a naughty open hip, so on one side you might feel a little bit less flexible, you might sink more onto that side, which feels like you're opening up the left hip in this instance. If that is how you feel, grab something nearby. It can be anything, a cushion, an iPhone box, a book. If you've got a yoga block, lovely. Stick it underneath your right hip so that you're more lifted, so that your hips are squared to the front. If you haven't got anything on hand to pop underneath your hips, lift yourself slightly up out of the stretch. You want to make sure those hips are squared to the front like a car head, like as you feel them melting open. Take a deep breath. We're going to start to walk those hands forward. So maybe you've only come to halfway today, that's absolutely fine. Maybe you drop onto your forearms and maybe you pull the torso to the bent knee and the forehead to the mat and you take your sleeping pigeon, which is an active rest and a passive stretch. So what that means is that it looks like we're doing nothing, but I'm sure all of you in the stretch can tell me your hips are definitely opening. So this is a good one, as I said before, if you are practicing for splits, and this doesn't feel too hideous, you can just chill in this pose on either side for about 10 minutes, you know, do your emails, do some typing, swipe Instagram for 10 minutes, and this will really, really open your hips. Um, take a nice deep breath here. Obviously, we don't really have the time to spend 10 minutes in today, which I'm sure a lot of you are very happy about. We're gonna walk those hands back into your upright pigeon. You can either stay here. If you're feeling flexible today, lift that back foot, your left foot. You can also take hold of your left foot with your left hand. And if you're feeling super flexy, the left foot comes into the left elbow crease. Take a bind behind your head. Those of you that are flipping your grip, you can give that a go as well. And wherever you are, let's hold for five, four, three, two, and one, release that foot back down onto the mat. From where you are, you're gonna take that left leg and you're gonna swing it all the way around and it's gonna plant on the outside of your right knee. So I'm just gonna show you from the front what that's gonna look like. So your left leg is currently behind you. You're gonna take that left leg, it's gonna go in a circle Plant the left foot on the outside of the right knee. And I'm really sorry, I do sound effects for everything. And yes, I did do them before I had a child as well. That's just what I do. So left foot planted on the outside of the right knee. Try and keep those bottom cheeks down on the mat. Try not to lift on the left side and try and keep that left foot flat as well. Your right leg wants to stay in exactly the same position that it was in for pigeon pose. So you're gonna drop your left hand behind you, like we did at the beginning, like a secondary spine. Your right arm, inhale, reach it up towards the sky. Take a deep breath. Exhale, drop the right arm, bending the right arm. Take the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Push against that knee. Open your chest to the left side and twist, looking behind you, looking over that left shoulder. So just to repeat, your right hand up, bend the arm, drop the right elbow to the outside of the left knee, push with the right elbow against the left knee, look over the left shoulder and twist. This is called your half lord of the fishes pose. It's really good if you've got sciatica. Um, and it's also quite convoluted. I understand that if you are listening to the instructions I just gave and you're thinking, I have no idea what she just said, do not worry. That's absolutely fine. It is a little bit of a weird one. Take a nice deep breath. Exhale, release, and just give yourself a little counter, counter twist. Just come around to the right, push against the mat. Just feel that twist through the spine. Lovely. Gently bring yourself back to center place. Those palms untuck, the legs back into an all fours position. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, take a breath, spread the fingers. Tuck the toes. As you exhale, push up, downward facing. Navel towards the spine. Feet about hip width apart. Shoulders away from the ears. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Let's do everything on the other side. Left leg comes all the way up towards the sky. Three-legged dog. If you can stay here, 
You can also bend that left knee, gaze underneath the left armpit. Or if you want to walk that left foot the whole way over, take, the, take your wild thing pose, reach that left arm back. Send those hips up towards the sky. Wherever you are, we're going to hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Wild things back into your three-legged dog. Everyone meeting in three-legged dog. Send that left knee in towards your chest. Plant the left foot, bring yourself into a high lunge. Arms in line with those ears. Left knee above left ankle, hips underneath shoulders. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale, sink into that front knee bend. Inhale, turn that right foot out. Arms in line with your shoulders, warrior two. Gaze down your front fingertips. Tuck your tailbone under. Lovely, start to hinge forward with that left hand, turn it upwards. Send the right arm down the back of the right leg, the left arm up and over. Reverse warrior. Lovely. Breathe here. Exhale, bring yourself back in to your warrior two. Take a deep breath, straighten both legs, bring your palms together at your heart center. Feet facing the front, start to drop with the right knee. Drop that right palm towards the mat and lift that left arm up, Skandasana. Really nice. Hold here. Take a deep breath. Walk both hands to the center of the mat. Straighten your legs. Bring yourself into your wide leg forward fold. Grant the head towards the mat. Deep breath. Lengthen through the spine. So really, really feel from the tip of your spine down to your neck. Lengthening. Feel that pull on the back of the hamstrings. Deep breath. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Take one more here. On your exhale, straighten the arms, flatten the back. Bring your left hand into the center of your legs and reach that right arm up into your star pose. Stack those joints so um, shoulders on top of each other and wrists in a nice straight line. Gaze up at your extended arm star pose. Your left arm should be in the center of your legs. Right, so if you've, got a, if you've got a camera or a mirror, then you can see exactly where your alignment is. And let's hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Drop both hands and walk them towards that left foot to the inside of the left foot. Both feet facing the front. Bring yourself into your dragon pose. Lovely. Getting into those hip flexors. So if you want to get even deeper into your hip flexors, you can drop into lizard pose, so that's on your forearms. Still keep your back leg lifted. And we're going to hold for five, so also if you want to rock on that back foot, that starts to really open those hip flexors. So let's go for five, four, three, two, really nice, and one. Lovely. Everyone lengthening those arms. Take that left leg, pass it behind your hands and drop that right knee down onto the mat, bring yourself into your pigeon pose. So, hips square to the front. And again, if you feel yourself sinking onto the left hip, if you've got a naughty open hip, then grab something to pop underneath that left hip or just lift yourself higher out of the stretch to make sure that those hips stay square to the front. Send those shoulders down. Puff your chest out like a nice proud pigeon. Deep inhale. As you exhale, start to walk those hands forward. So maybe you come to halfway, maybe you drop onto your forearms, and maybe you sink all the way down into your resting pigeon. So remembering that even though it is a resting pose, it is still opening the hips, it is still stretching. So you should still feel that feeling of your hips opening, that kind of melting into the mat. I know that some people really don't like this stretch, which is why I started not doing it in every single class, but it's a very beneficial hip opener. It's really good for hip alignment. It's really good for hip flexors. It's really good if you guys are really interested in, in progressing your split, which I know we haven't covered in a couple of weeks, um, but this is such a lovely one. And if you are super flexible in your hips, 
um, you probably really enjoy this one. Um, it's also a really nice one to do when you're pregnant, um, on a side note. Take a nice deep breath here. Start to walk those hands back into your upright pigeon. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you want to lift that back foot. Maybe you take hold of your back foot with your hand. Maybe you take the right foot into your right elbow crease. Take a little bind. And anyone that's flipping their grip, feel free to do that now. Wherever you are, let's hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Drop that back foot. Lovely. So coming into our half Lord of the Fishes. So we take the right leg and we swing it the whole way around and plant on the outside of the left knee. So from the front again, so you guys can see. So this is what you will look like in your pigeon pose, kind of. And you'll take that right leg and you'll go all the way around in a circle, that right foot comes all the way around and then you plop it on the outside of your left knee. So make sure your bum cheeks are even on the mat. Plant that right foot nice and flat as well. Take your right hand behind you like a secondary spine. Inhale the left arm up towards the sky. Bend that arm, take the left elbow to the outside of your right knee, push the knee away, gaze over your right shoulder and twist, you're looking all the way behind you. Really, really twisting that spine. So again, twists, really nice way of energizing the spine, really nice way to release tension. And if you're pregnant, please avoid any twists, probably should have said that um, before, but twists are not good for the fetus, they restrict airflow. So, they can be a little bit dangerous in pregnancy. Gazing all the way behind you, push against that knee, deep breath in here. And exhale. Take one more breath here. Gently bring yourself back to center and take your hands around to the left. So you're gonna give yourself that little counter twist. Really lovely. Push your palms flat, unattach your legs. And just bring yourself into a kneeling position on your mat. Toes tucked under, palms on your knees, sit nice and tall, drop those shoulders. Thunderbolt pose. If you want to, you can tuck the toes, sit your bum on your heels, and you're going to get that nice stretch on the back of your feet, on your arches. Can give a bit of a pinching feeling, which some people don't like, but it's quite a nice sensation to really breathe into. Um, if you'd like to, just hold here. We're just going to breathe, sit tall, drop the shoulders, try and keep that back nice and straight. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale, really lovely. And exhale, give me one more breath. Gently untuck the feet, sit your bum on your heels, bring your hands behind you, slight bend in the elbows. We're gonna take our toe pose. Inhale, exhale, roll onto the tops of your feet, lift your knees. So, toes pose, it's really good for runners, stretching our calves, the tops of our feet and our arches. And it's good for combating any issues with the connective tissues in the feet that might cause chronic heel and foot pain. I personally find this one a little bit uncomfortable, so if you do, you can just bring yourself out of the stretch. We're not going to hold it for long. We're going to go for five, four, three, two, and one. Gently bring yourself back to center. Untuck those legs. Bring your feet flat on the mat, knees bent, arms in line with your knee. Peel yourself back down onto the mat, one vertebrae at a time. Flat on the mat, arms by your side. Head, neck, shoulder and spine in a nice straight line. Feet and knees parallel about hip width apart and keep those feet flat. So we're going to take our shoulder bridge. Very important. Try not to do this with your knees. I mean, obviously not that exaggerated, but try and keep them nice and parallel. Same with your feet. Try not to turn them out. The reason we do this is because if you do that, you lose that engagement and strengthening in your glutes and hamstrings. Take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, start to lift the hips towards the sky. Imagine someone's got a piece of string, they're pulling you up by your, by your pelvis. 
Walk the shoulders together underneath your back and interlace your fingers. Lifting those hips high, keep your neck long, your throat free. So shoulder bridge, lovely, lovely pose. Bit of a powerhouse, it does quite a lot of things. Obviously it's good for our shoulders. We're strengthening them here. Good for working on back bends, if that is something that you're interested in. It's really strengthening our glutes and our hamstrings. It's also really good for your pelvic floor. So we should always be working on pelvic floor strength because that area does deteriorate as we get older, but particularly mums, if you've been pregnant, if you've had a baby, you'll probably know all about pelvic floor and uh, the damage that that can do. So practicing your Kegels in this position, you can also do it when you're pregnant. It's also good for anxiety, insomnia, and stress. Um, people say that if you hold this for five minutes a day, it can combat digestive issues and symptoms of depression. So it's an all round good little stretch. Keep those hips high. Let's hold five, four, three, two, and one. Gently peel yourself back down onto the mat. Draw the knees in towards your chest, Alpanasana. Take hold of your knees and gently rock from side to side to release your spine on the mat. You can also take a happy baby pose if you'd like. So taking hold of your big toes and draw your knees towards you and just give yourself that little rock. I sometimes find that's a nicer release than Alpanasana, but it's completely up to you. So, we're going to take our full wheel pose, and that is if it's in your practice, if it's something that you'd like to work on. As always, everything in the class is optional, but particularly intense poses with uh, big back bends. Um, so if you don't want to take your full wheel, you can take shoulder bridge again. You can take your legs up the wall, so spine to the floor, legs nice and straight, which is a really nice restorative pose. It also combats period pain. So ladies, you, ladies, if you are on your period, this is a really nice one for that. Um, or you can just do whatever you want, lie on the mat, take happy baby, take an early shavasana, it's completely up to you. Those of you that are wanting to take your full wheel, it's the same setup as your shoulder bridge. You're going to drop your hands on either side of your ears. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, push up through your arms. So our aim in full wheel is that our wrists eventually are underneath our shoulders and our arms are straight. You want a deep bend in the back, looking almost all the way behind you. Try and keep the feet flat if you can and push that chest forward. And with all things deep back bends and inversions, they can make you quite emotional. They are a bit intense. Only hold for as long as you feel comfortable. Be very careful coming down of your head and your neck. Hug your knees into your chest, take an up and ask no when you're done. And um, they do make you feel a bit emotional. That's completely normal. It's a very uh, big extension, a big heart opener. So if you're still with me, let's hold five, four, three, two, and one. Gently drop yourself down onto the mat. Draw those knees towards you, release your spine and breathe. So it might make you feel as well a little bit out of breath and that's because those deep back bends can be like a burst of energy when you lift yourself up. And when you come out, it kind of feels a bit like, like, um, like you've run half marathon, maybe not, but a little bit. Reach your arms out on either side of the mat. Take your legs into a tabletop position and you're just gonna drop both knees over to the left and gaze to the right. So I always like to finish with a little supine twist. Gaze down those right fingertips. We always look in the opposite direction of our knees and you get the maximum out of your twist. Deep breath. And exhale. Gently bring yourself back to centre. Drop those knees to the right and gaze to the left. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. And bring yourself back to centre. Straighten your body out. 
Point your fingers, point your toes, reaching, reaching from one side of the room to the other. We take our full body stretch to finish. So imagine that someone's pulling you by the fingers, someone's pulling you by the toes and you can't get away. You're reaching, reaching, reaching. They're trying to add inches onto your body, feel tension in every part of your body. Pull those shoulders up to your ears, screw those facial features up, tiny beady eyes, a billion double chins, make the ugliest face you've ever made in your life. And while you're here, pour in all that mental tension as well. What's annoying you? What's upsetting you? What's really getting to you at the moment? Let's pour it all in and then we're going to throw it all out into the universe, all our mental and physical tension. And hopefully it will give us five minutes peace. Keep reaching, deep breath in here. And exhale. And let's take one more breath in here. And exhale, let's go for five, four, keep reaching, three, two, and one. Let go, bring those arms down by your side, feet falling open. Hands by your side, palms facing up to the sky. Take a deep breath in here. And exhale. And just grab whatever you need for your Shavasana. If you already have it, that's lovely. If you need cushions, blankets, socks, jumpers, glass of water, dim your light, put on some music. And as always, if you don't want to say for Shavasana, that's absolutely fine. I won't be offended. You're very welcome to log off now. Everyone that is staying, you're just going to draw yourself down into the mat. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, release, allow yourself to melt into your space. Bring yourself back to where you were at the beginning of the class. Tuning out all your outside distractions, thoughts, and worries. Focus in on your breath and feel each inhale wash through you, cleansing your body. And exhale, release. Maybe you reach for that imaginary broom to sweep your mind clear of any clutter. Allowing that space for your breath. Allow each inhale to sink you deeper into the earth and exhale release. Draw your attention towards your feet. Feel each toe unravel one by one. Ankles, calves, knees and thighs, light weights on the mat. All the way up to the base of your spine, feel each vertebrae trickle down into the mat like water. As though someone is pressing down the keys on a piano. all the way up to the base of your spine. And then pull those shoulders down away from the ears. Draw the shoulder blades down your spine, melting into the mat like lava. Allow your arms to fall open at your side as though the batteries have been taken out Palms fall open and each fingertip unravels. Your shoulders draw away from the ears, allow your neck to grow long. Head become light, facial features soft and gentle as we check in with those key tension points. Softening our jaw, unlocking the back teeth, and dropping the tongue from the roof of the mouth, maybe parting our lips slightly. 
And finally, we take our attention to the chest and abdomen. As we breathe, feeling it fill all the way to the top. As we exhale, release. Releasing any tightness or tension. Just allowing that slow and steady rhythm of your breath to drive you. To pull you deeper into your mat. To allow you to sink every inch of your body into the earth becoming one with the ground. Letting go of any tightness or tension in every corner of your body, feel that breath rush in and out. Become light. Only your breath rushing in and out. And take this moment just for you, as you inhale and exhale. And just gently start to wiggle the fingers and the toes to draw awareness back into your body. Hug your knees in towards your chest. And gently rock from side to side to release the spine on the mat. Bring yourself all the way over into the into a fetal position on the right, and then gently bring yourself up to seated palms on your knees. Let's take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, just let out a big sigh. And again, inhale. And exhale. And once more for luck, inhale. And draw your palms together at your heart center. 